وأهله وأصحابه وسلم أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجة وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him because he is the Lord and the God of all of the universe He is the especially merciful God and the entirely merciful God and he would be the God that has dominion on the day of judgment and because he is the God that created you and I I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his blessings and his salawat upon our Lord Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is the seed of all prophethood and his household, um, his sahaba and the entire ummah and as to what follows in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, he said that the Prophet وسلم, said, Inna lillahi tis'ata wa tis'ina isman li'atan illa wahida man ahsaha dakhla al-jannah. The Prophet وسلم, says in this hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. And if you and I do not understand what 99 means, he goes further to say, Ni'atan illa wahida, it's 100 save 1. So if you have 100, you minus 1, you still get the same 99. Men ahsoha, whoever does ihsor of this name. And I'm not gonna use the, I'm not gonna use the translation of memorize the name. Whoever does ihsaw of this name, dakhwal al-jannah, those set of people would be entered into the garden of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what does it mean for us to do ihsaw? For us to be careful, to be mindful, to pay attention to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah that the Prophet had identified. In the Sunnah of the Prophet, it is shown that the Prophet had also praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with other names. So Allah for surely has more than 99 names, but there's this special group of 99 names, and again, if we know them. We memorize them, we learn their names and attributes, and then we implement those attributes in our lives, then we would have done what is called Ihsaw, and at that point, we will be eligible for Allah's mercy to enter into the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because all of those names are 99, and we have a limited time on the minbar, we would not be able to talk about all of those names. However, I would like to pick two of those names that are very, very popular. You and I recite it every time we recite the Quran, every time we observe Salah. The first verse, we would actually recite, or the first, the opening of all of the verses in the Quran, except for Tawbah, those two names are captured in there. The names are Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. In Surah Al-Fatiha, we would usually recite those two names in the verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahim The entirely merciful God and the especially merciful God 
Both names, according to the scholars, have the same foundational word where both names were coined out of. And those both names carry an exaggerated meaning. And we will talk about that in a little bit, inshallah. But the foundation, the masdar, where both names were derived from, is the word rahmah, which is to show mercy. Rahmah, which is to show mercy. Whenever we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're describing Allah from one of his names that he had identified to us in the Quran, we cannot make up our own names for Allah, right? We would identify those names like Al Ghafar, right? Al Razak. These names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had referred to Himself as are descriptive names of the actual proper name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars unanimously agree that the actual proper name of Allah is the word Allah. Other names that we call him with would be descriptive names. The names that we use as the sifa, the descriptive names of our creator. So when we look at a descriptive name of Allah, we can derive an attribute of Allah from that descriptive name. However, we should never make the mistake of grabbing an attribute of Allah and then trying to make a name for Allah from that. That is wrong. That is wrong. And the reason why I'm talking about this and I'm being a little bit emphatical is because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses all things. And you and I take it for granted too often. We can call on Allah, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the first name saying, Ya Allah. But Allah preferred another name that we can call on him with. And out of all of the names that he has, he prefers the name that has a rooted meaning in him being the most merciful God. Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah. Rahman. Call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is your God, or you call on the most merciful God. The most merciful God. So when we talk about these two names, Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim, and we've explained that both of them has the same foundational meaning, which is to show mercy, to demonstrate mercy. Allah tells us in Surah Al Furqan. Rahman, the worshippers of the most merciful God. So he calls himself a merciful God in that point. So when both names, Ar Rahman and Rahim, carries the foundational meaning of being merciful, have you and I truly demonstrate the attribute of mercy in our day to day life? What about that person that we get mad at and we don't speak with anymore? What about the people that we treat unfairly? What about those other people that we don't want to give them a second chance? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly demonstrates to us in the Quran that He is a merciful God. In multiple places in the Quran. Multiple. One of the ways that Allah demonstrates His mercy is by giving us this month of Ramadan. Does not matter what sin you and I have committed, He is willing to wipe away all of those sins and give us a reward that's up to 83 years of service towards Him, even though many of us might not live up to 83 years. And imagine how many Ramadan we've gone past that we've achieved and lived through and just count 83 years of reward for all of those years of Ramadan that we fasted. And we might not live up to 83 years. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrating his mercy. And when the scholars would explain the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, there are countless of explanation. I will try to just touch on two of them because of the little time that we have. 
They say that Ar Rahman would mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the entirely merciful God. He is the what? Entirely merciful God. For all of his creation. It does not matter if you believe in him or not. It does not matter if you obey him or not. It does not matter if you worship him or not. He is still an entirely merciful God. He gives you your livelihood for that day. He gives you the ability to breathe air in and out. Those that disbelieve in the existence of a creator and they disbelieve in the, in the fact that they will be resurrected on the day of judgment, Allah still provides for them. Sometimes he puts them in a position where they earn a lot, a lot more money than you and I. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrating his Rahman. Because he is a God that is merciful. And then the Rahim, they explain it as not entirely merciful, but especially merciful. This special mercy, this special mercy is due unto the true believers. Those that have worked hard and they have toiled and moiled for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, he rewards them with al-jannah. Wa kana bil mu'minina rahima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrate his special mercy for those true believers. That is one way the scholars will translate Rahman and Rahim. Another translation that they would use for it, they would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, has two ways that we look at Allah. The first way is in terms of the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second way is in terms of the actions of Allah. So Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has to do with sifat, the sifa of the zat of Allah. The explaining or the description of the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Ar-Rahim has to do with the, ex the explanation or description of Allah as it relates to the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we refer to the essence of Allah, Allah's essence is not similar to you and I's essence. For example, you and I have hands and we have fingers. And there are ways we can use them to grab things and do, you know, different things. Allah had also created animals. They have limbs. He had created other creatures that look like they have hands. But the essence of their hands is not the same essence of our own hands. Allah also claims and he tells us in the Quran that he has hands. If you don't believe that Allah has hands, it's as though you're belying the Quran. But we do not try to mimic or imagine what the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in al Fatih that those that give bay'ah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are actually giving bay'ah to Allah. Yadullah fawqa aidihim. The hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above your hands. If we translate that verse as the power of Allah, we are trying to belie Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tells us that he has hands. He surely does, hand, does have hands. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the hearts of all of the creation of Allah they are between the two fingers of Allah. So that tells us that Allah has hands. But do we try to imagine what that looks like? Or do we try, or should we try to liken the hands of Allah to our hands? Nah, we don't do that. Because we have no knowledge of that unseen. We say, Semina wa atana. We hear and we obey.
But when it comes to the actions of Allah, that is where the Rahim comes in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves whoever he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala runs to us when we walk towards him in an adib. Do we try to imagine what that looks like? No, we don't. In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that on the day of judgment, he would come to Ard al-Mashar. He would come to the land of gathering where you and I would have been standing for more than 50,000 years. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا the, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come and then the angels would come in rows. That is a verb, that is an action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we try to imagine that or how does that happen? No, we do not. But we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates this mercy however he wants. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we also have a, a verse, uh, a, 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 a chapter in the Quran, a surah in the Quran, that Allah named after one of his sifa to that, Surah Al-Rahman. But funny enough, that verse does not carry the majority of the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, in it. If we look at the entire Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ar-Rahman in multiple areas in Surah to Maryam, a totally different surah. What's the idea behind that? What is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mention in Surah to Maryam for the most part, that's where you will find the most Rahman in the Quran. Why would Allah use that verse, choose that verse to mention himself many times in, in, the, in the surah. The surah has two main points, two main ideas, two main maqasid. The first idea is that it talks about the people that had lied about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shatamani ibn Adam. The first point is they lied that the Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had begotten a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Maryam how he had asked Jibreel to appear to Maryam and then convey the message to her. All of the story is in there. So because of that lie, that is one maqasid right there. The second maqasid is that people also claim that it's not possible that after we're passed on, that Allah will be able to bring us back into life. Bring us back up and resurrect us for the day of judgment. So they deny the day of, the day of judgment. As though Allah is not capable of doing it. The reason why we have a lot of Rahman in that surah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if not for the fact that in his core essence, in his divine essence, he has mercy in there, he would have wiped out the entire mankind for the two accusations they've placed upon him and nothing would happen. But because he's a merciful God, he forgives us our sins. He blesses us with too many opportunities and too many blessings and grace that you and I totally overlook. And another opportunity is this month of Ramadan. The month is already counting down. And many of us have not been maximizing the opportunities that we have in the month. If you come to the masjid during Tarawih, the masjid is not even full. People are out there playing and having fun and just, subhanAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a merciful God. If not for the mercy that he demonstrates, he would have, he tells us in the Quran, he would have wiped out the entire earth and no animal would be left. 
Not, not humans anymore. Not even an animal will be left. But because of his mercy, Rahmetuhu Sadaot Rodabu. Aw Raledet Rodabu. The mercy of Allah comes before his anger, and the mercy of Allah actually overpowers and overcomes his anger. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show mercy upon us in this month of Ramadan, to help us maximize our reward in this month of Ramadan, and save us from the, from the shackles of hell. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirat hasana wa qidna adha banna. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Inna al-a'qibata lil-muttaqeen Wa la'udu'ana illa ahla al-zalimeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful God and we would never find anything or anyone that comes close to the demonstration of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown you and I I want to quickly bring us to something that you and I ex experience every day and we act as though it's a normal occurrence and we act as though it's automatic that it, that should just happen but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that he has the power to change it but because he's a merciful God he is not going to change it because he knows what difficulty and hardship you and I would go through if he changes those two phenomena in Surah Al-Qasas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qul ara'aytum in ja'ala Allah alaykum al-layla sarmadan ila yawm al-qiyamah, man ilahun ghayru Allah ya'tikum bidiyah, afala tisma'un. Have you considered, the Prophet, Allah is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell you and I, have you considered if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to let the ninth to go continuously, sermadan yani da'iman, for Allah to allow the ninth to continue until the day of judgment. So you and I will go to bed at night, and then when we expect to wake up in the morning, we would, never, we would not wake, we would wake up, but we would not have any sunlight. Imagine living on earth without sunlight. Imagine going through life without sunlight. What do you think would potentially happen to you and I? If Allah decides to put us in a, in a, in a condition where we're only in darkness forever until the day of judgment, then Allah asks you and I, Men ilahun ya'tikum bidiyah. Which God or which deity do you and I, would you and I run to and ask that deity to give us lighting, to give us brightness? Would you still not listen to the call of Allah and obey Allah? If you and I don't have the sunlight, what can potentially happen? Because of the fact that there's no sun, the, the professional, the scientists have said if a person goes for so many hours with no sunlight, they would not have vitamin B, vitamin D. And because of that, they can face, they can go through depression. There is different types of hormones that, ex, that comes out of the body just because of the sun that, we, that, that hits our skin. If those hormones are not activated, do you know what damage that would cause to our, our system inside of us? Our biological system? So if Allah decides not to give us sun anymore, and we stay in darkness until the day of judgment, which God are we going to call to give us sun? To give us brightness? Would we still not believe in Allah? And Allah switches that same question. Allah says,
Teskununa bi athara tubsirun. Allah is saying, if I decide to give you sunlight or the daytime continuously until the day of judgment, and you got no nights to rest, no nights to cool off from all of the stress you're going through, who is there? Or is there any deity that can bring the night time for you so that you can go and rest? After that, Sirun, would you still not see? Are you and I still blind? Then Allah says, Wa min rahmatihi, ya Allah. And out of the mercy of Allah, جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ He makes us go through the night and the day. لِتَسْكُلُونَ فِيهِ وَلْتَبْدَقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ So that you and I can rest at night and during the day we can get up and go to work and go look for our means of livelihood. Out of the mercy of Allah. And you and I take that like a normal automatic thing that should just happen. Why did Allah do this? What is the reason behind the fact that Allah made us be able to go through the night and the day? So that we can rest during the night and during the day we can get up and go about our business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So that you and I will show gratitude and we will be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question is, am I truly thankful for the fact that I get to see a brighter day every morning? Or am I truly, truly thankful that every night I get to go to bed and sleep? You and I take it for granted. Allah wants us to be grateful for the mercies that he has blessed us with. In this month of Ramadan, the verse that's often quoted is the verse where Allah says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi undila fihi al-Qur'an. Right? If we go towards the end of that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ وَلْتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَا هَدَكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so that we can also show gratitude. But you and I are not grateful enough. And that's the plan of the devil. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expelled us shaitan, bismillah from Jannah, and he told Allah to permit him to not die until the day of judgment, Allah says, you're gonna be permitted to not die. He says that he's gonna come with war and battle for you and I, until the stage where you and I would not show gratitude to Allah. So who's winning the battle now? Are we winning the battle or is the devil winning the battle? Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah Hayya 'ala as-salati hayya 'ala al-falah Qad qamati as-salatu qad qamati as-salah Allah Akbar Allah Akbar la ilaha illallah um, brothers and sisters, real quick, I have two quick announcements. The first one, after the salah, we'll pray a janazah for a brother that passed that passed on. Um, Imam Osman and the other brothers went to took him to the to the cemetery to go bury him. He passed on due to COVID, but again, we, we want to make dua for him, inshallah. Because of that condition, they did not want to bring the body into the masjid. So after the salah, we'll pray janazah for him, inshallah. And then the other one, um, on May 1st, we're gonna have, the Muslim is going to just schedule a, a lecture where we'll be looking at, Imam, Imam Usman will be looking at the benefits 
that we can derive from all of the lessons in Surah to, the Surah to Yusuf. So it's going to be at 5 p.m. here in the Masjid, inshallah. If you are available, try as much as possible to make time for the program. May Allah increase our reward. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Malik, Yawm al Din. Iya kana hudu, Iya kana sta'in. Ahdina sirat al Mustaqim. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين في قريش إلى فيهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف الله أكبر سمع الله المن حمدا Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ahdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله المن حمدا Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله So let's uh, quickly make the Janaza prayer. The name of the brother that passed is um, Abdul Jalil Surakat. So if you want to include that in the reward, so may Allah accept that, inshallah. Abdul Jalil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh yeah, we have um, food in the boxes in the by, by the back over there. So if you please, um, you can take that home.